Because he's Phil. Phil. Phil of the future. He's a 22nd century man. Back in the early mid 2000s, we took a holiday through history with the Diffie family as they got stuck in our time zone. Wow, was that such an incredible theme song or what? I mean, honestly, if you don't remember the show too much, the theme song was killer. And come on, the same people behind the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody's theme song made it, so you know it's a bop. Shortly after Disney Plus launched back in 2019, one of the first shows I rewatched and binged completely was Phil of the Future. I remember when the show was on TV and was blown away at this moment. I mean, no, it doesn't look the best in retrospect, but to the younger me, this was cool. So cool. He's so, so cool. cool. So, I wanted to take some time here today and talk about the show, the short but sweet life it had on TV, and hopefully see if there's any others out there who enjoy it or have some thoughts on the show as well. And what better year to speak about the show about a family from the year 2121. Literally 100 years from the current year, so strap in and prepare to travel through time. Phil of the Future was a Disney Channel original sitcom that first aired on Disney's flagship channel between June 18th, 2004 and August 19th, 2006. Spanning two seasons, the series was centered around the 22nd century Diffie family who, after crash landing their used time machine they rented for the family vacation, get stuck in 2004. Unable to return to the year of 2121, the Diffies have to do their best to blend into suburban mid-2000s Pickford without raising the suspicions of nosy supporting characters of their futuristic origins. The series' main character is 15-year-old Phil Diffie, thus, you know, the name of the show, and his adjustment to life as a modern teenager at H.G. Wells High School. H.G. Wells, of course, as many classic sci-fi fans probably know, is the author of the classic 1895 novel, The Time Machine, as well as known as the father of science fiction in general, so that's fun. The show takes place in real time, with the two years the show was on the air corresponding with the two years the Diffie family ended up spending in the present, or I guess now is it the past. I don't know, time's weird. With them landing in 2004 and, spoiler alert, leaving in 2006 with the finale titled Back to the Future, not the movie, which is kind of funny. Phil the Future starred iconic Disney Channel actor and certified member of Disney Channel's Circle of Stars, Ricky Ullman, who was another hit Disney media such as Pixel Perfect, and was created by Douglas Tuber and Tim Miley. Park your Skyac and stick around. Phil will be right back on Disney Channel. Let's flash the Rama back to Phil of the Future on Disney Channel. Phil Diffie is an easygoing 22nd century teenager who, despite his clear intelligence, often comes off as naive or weird to his 21st century peers because of his ignorance of 21st century tech and culture. Phil spends most of the series just trying to survive modern high school, or for us, 2004 high school, often using the futuristic tech his family brought with them on vacation to cut corners or get ahead, or to just impress Keeley. Beyond Phil, the out-of-time Diffie family also included Phil's father, Lloyd Diffie, who spends most of the series either trying to fix the time machine, working his modern job at Mantis Hardware, or paranoidally trying to prevent the current government from finding out that his family is from the future. Barbara Diffie, a hands-off kind of mother who is obsessed with how things in the 21st century work, and Phil's little sister. Pim Diffie, a troublemaker who is constantly trying to either prank Phil or dominate the world. Odd note, originally Barbara Diffie was going to have a detachable head and a robotic body, which is interesting in the first season as she's always wearing chokers and turtlenecks to cover up where that head seam would be, but anything related to this was eventually edited out before airing despite this being in early advertisements. Man, I'm still waiting for the whole Futurama head in a jar thing to be a reality so I can live on a shelf and annoy my great 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 grandchild's family with my back-in-the-day TV show and cartoon knowledge. <sighs> One can dream. Also living in the Diffie household is Curtis, a caveman who stowed away on the Diffie's time machine during one of their prehistoric stops before getting stuck with them in 2004. Over the course of the series, Curtis becomes more and more modernized, as can be seen as he gets a job with Lloyd at Mantis Hardware. Despite that, he does occasionally revert back to his caveman instincts, often causing issues for the Diffie family. The main antagonist of the show, if any character can even be classified as such, is H.G. Wells High School Vice Principal Neil Hackett. 
SCP Hackett's strong belief in the existence of aliens and the Diffie's family's strange behavior has him spending most of the series trying to prove that the Diffies are aliens in disguise. J.P. Manow, who plays Vice Principal Neil Hackett, also plays Curtis, implying that Curtis might be his distant ancestor in the series. J.P. was also in that Caveman show you vaguely remember as a thing that may have existed, and it totally did for a brief minute, by the way. Outside of the Diffie family, the only person who knows that Phil is from the future is his best friend and eventual love interest, Keely Teslo, who learns about Phil's origins pretty early on. Phil the Future was, notably Brenda Song's first recurring role on the Disney Channel with her playing the part of Tia, Keely and Phil's friend. Brenda ended up leaving the show for its second season to take up her iconic role as London Tipton on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. The show was also, for a handful of episodes, home to Evan Peters as Seth, in the exact teenage role fashion Evan Peters would play within multiple productions. You're telling me there's a difference between Evan as Seth and Phil in the future and Evan as Russell in Sleepover? Exactly. In the final episode of Phil of the Future, Back to the Future, not the movie, longtime will they won't they couple Phil and Keely finally get together, a fact that was a bright spot for many of the viewers back then. Immediately after this, though, in a dark spot in many young childhoods, Lloyd Diffie reveals that he finally managed to fix the family time machine, with the revelation that he had been deliberately stalling fixing it since the family was so happy living in the past. But as it got harder and harder to keep the family's secret secret, he had decided it would be best to travel back to the time they belong. Keely and Phil have a dramatic parting after Phil convinces his father to go back so he can say goodbye to her properly, and in doing so, Keely makes Phil promise to wait for her. I don't know about that, Phil. I think she's just gonna be about 132 years older than you. With that, the family climbs back into the time machine and heads back to 2121, leaving the show on a romantic cliffhanger. The show also ends in a plot cliffhanger when in the last scene, the family realizes they left Curtis behind in the past, which is still Curtis's future. And now they do have to go back for him. So while having an opening for more if they were gonna do more seasons, it still technically gave the show an ending of sorts, which kind of felt like a rarity for shows as short as only two seasons. Though actor Ricky Ullman says he himself does not know why the show was eventually canceled after 43 episodes. Some fans speculate that Disney decided to take the revenue that was made from the show and create a new show with it. This show ultimately being Wizards of Waverly Place. Yes, what I'm saying is blame Selena Gomez for taking Phil the Future off the air. Okay, relax, I'm kidding. Blame David Henry. I don't know why, just do it, alright? But, if you think about it, Wizards of Waverly Place is a very similar concept to Phil of the Future. Both feature a family removed from the society around them, Wizards vs. Humans, Future vs. the Past, trying to blend in to protect a family-wide secret, while using wacky and strange tools and devices, magic for the Russos, 22nd century tech for the Diffies, uh, to get in and out of trouble. And the entire series is leading up towards one major event, the Family Wizard Competition, or Getting Back to the Future. What makes this show special and warrants the memories I have for it is that the show itself is quirky, and not the, oh wow, that person is so quirky type of quirky, but the type of quirky that makes things surreal in the weirdest of ways. I've said quirky too much. Allowing itself to play out almost like a live action cartoon with ridiculous circumstances, tongue in cheek dialogue, the music and sound effects that correspond with facial reactions, movements, as well as emphasizing the awkwardness, and even some fourth wall breaking. I mean, look at this moment. As Phil was trying to explain things he'd rather do than hug his sister, the intro starts playing until he pushes the card out of the way, saying, wait, 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 he's not finished. Then once he is done, cues the intro card to come in once more. I'm not finished. The future tech and special effects in this show were always fun to see, making it stand out from the crowd of other Disney shows. As well, sure, some of them did have more fantastical elements. When we were blessed with anything sci-fi, it was highly appreciated for its blending of practical and CGI effects. In the first season, you can really feel the low budget attitude that it had, which gave it an even more charming feeling, honestly. Like this flashback scene to them finding Curtis in the past, and it's just some random place in the park or the woods with a sip a filter. It had that charming aesthetic which propelled my enjoyment of the show at first. Later on, when the show felt more structured technically, it carried the charm through the spirit of the characters and the writing mixed with the music cues and beats. It was also always cool to get a look into the future, not just by the gadgets we see throughout the show, but when Phil uses, like, the virtue goggles with Keeley to virtually go into a mall of the future. Now, in saying all of this, I wouldn't classify Phil of the Future as a particularly great show. It most likely would 
wouldn't top your list of Disney Channel classics either, I'm guessing. But it did something better than most short-lived shows, and that was leave a, so far, real, lifelong impression on me. My memories and fondness of it. An easy watch with minimal dedication needed to get through, now having watched through it a third time personally on Disney+, Plus, it's a nice distraction for my Sopranos rewatch, that's for sure. The show did well in also pushing Ali Mishaka into the stardom light. Her character here, Keely, is a great character to pair up with Phil, as Phil being used to a lot of the technology and futuristic stuff since that's the time he came from, Keely gets to be us, that reactionary, wow, look at that, what is this, type of character in the show. She also has her own interests and passions like journalism, and we do have dedicated episodes of exploring that here within the show. And like I said earlier, there's that will they, won't they that she has between Phil throughout the series leading up to the final moments before he heads back to the future. But I'm gonna use that word again, quirkiness, it just embodies her character throughout it. But Ali's stardom was really just beginning because outside of this, bringing in her sister for the music that they do to create the duo of Ali and AJ was a huge phenomenon at the time. And they would even get their own movie together later on called Cal Bellas. Maybe one day we'll take a look into that Disney Channel original movie. Now, Phil the Future did have some reruns later on on Disney's life, I think even playing as late as 2017. But the only physical media ever released for this was in 2005 called Gadgets and Gizmos, which contained four episodes of the show. Oh, and it did have a video game. And like most Disney Channel live action shows turned video game, it was released for the Game Boy Advance in 2006, in which you play as Phil taking down the clone pet creatures called Blahs thanks to Pim's misdoings. It wasn't downright awful. Phil of the Future was an interesting show with a fun premise and fun performances. Because it's such an easy watch and now it's on streaming, going through its 43 episodes is a breeze, and now for the third year in a row doing so has me highly recommending you to check it out if you haven't. Or if you have, give it a rewatch. Yeah, it's a bit dated and the first season has its rougher moments, but it brings me back in time and by the time it's over, I'm ready to travel back to the present. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I appreciate it very much. Let me know your thoughts on Phil the Future as well as other Disney Channel shows from this era we should check out here on the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.